the Kurds. And after they cleared the, the Kurds in cooperation with some terrorist organizations, they are trying to uh, attack Syria proper, basically because they want to have a piece of Syria for themselves, as was the case during the Ottoman Empire, because this is part of Erdogan's policy to expand uh, Turkey to its old uh, Ottoman Empire borders. So uh, we have NATO that has done that. The European Union now, what is the role of the European Union? Today, the, uh, the, the president of the European Union, Michel, the president of the European Commission, the president of European Parliament, along with the Greek prime minister, they flew over the border to, uh, and the Greek prime minister explained to them what the situation was and how difficult it was. Of course, today, uh, the people creating the incidents of yesterday and the day before, they had disappeared because, uh, because Ankara had told them since the EU is coming, let's be good today and don't create any kind of problems. So they did not see what was happening yesterday. Of course, they saw the, the videos of yesterday, but in uh, real life, they did not see anything of what was happening. Now, in reality, uh, Turkey is using these so-called refugees, and I say so-called refugees because many of these people, they are Turks. I can hear them, they speak Turkish among themselves, they don't speak Arabic among themselves. Many of them are from Africa. And now I saw on Interfax, the Russian news agency, that is saying 130,000 are being sent towards the Greek borders. Now, the EU, uh, the president of the European uh, Commission said that she will uh, give money to Greece to be able to, to, to support uh, the the, to hold the borders free of uh, the so-called refugees, Frontex is going to be um, is, is going to be augmented with more troops coming to defend the Greek borders. But that's not the issue. The issue is that something must be done towards Turkey. I mean, it's nice to have the solidarity of the e European Union, but nothing is being done towards Turkey. And one example I can tell you. Last June, the, European, uh, su the, the summit of the European Union took a decision to take sanctions on Turkey for the violation of the territorial integrity of Cyprus, because they were drilling on on Cyprus territory and on Cyprus uh, economic exclusive zone. After eight months uh, last week, uh, measures uh, were taken against two people. The deputy director of the Turkish uh, oil uh, drilling company and a director. It took eight months to do that. But these are not sanctions. What will affect Turkey to stop uh, to to stop this story is to freeze the customs union between the EU and Turkey. If you freeze that, then they would feel the economic, uh, uh, these are true economic sanctions that will have an effect on Turkey because all the agricultural products that Turkey exports to the EU will uh, will be taxed. I mean, they will have to pay duties uh, when they go in. They will not be without tax as they are now. And that will cost them a lot. This, this language is the only language that Ankara would understand. But because of the economic interest of Germany and of other countries, they are not taking these measures. And these are measures which, which are not uh, for the first time. In, uh, in, 19, uh, in 1981, when uh, the coup d'etat in Turkey took place under Evren, the EU froze the association agreement between Turkey and the EU, and the customs union did not advance. Now it's another opportunity to do that. But no, they refused to do that. It was nice that they came today. It was nice the solidarity that they showed. And today also the... Uh, the foreign minister of the EU, the Spanish Borel, I think, he's visiting Ankara to, uh, 
to see if they can exercise some kind of, of pressure to Ankara. But Ankara will not do anything. They will continue bombing Syria because they want part of Syria. And they had part of Syria uh, during the Ottoman Empire. So that is the situation. Now, what they are doing, the Turks, they are bringing these refugees. I'm speaking about the land border. They're, they're bringing these refugees up to the land border. They create, they, they give them gas, uh, gas, tear gas canisters. And they throw the, refu- the so-called refugees, because I don't think that they're true refugees, they throw these, ga- gas can- these tear gas canisters to the Greek soldiers, to the Greek police, guarding the Greek frontier. So the next step will be, and today we had, uh, I saw a, a video where the Greek police were on the ground and gunshots were being heard coming from the Turkish side. So the next level of escalation would be exchange of fire between the Greek soldiers and the Turkish soldiers, which could develop into into a a war. That's for the land border. And if if, uh, Turkey attacked Greece, it would be a case, uh, alliance case for the EU. Yeah, yes, but the, the EU came today. Okay, that was a good move. They expressed their solidarity to Greece. They would give us, uh, they will enhance the presence of Frontex to do that. Okay, that that's something positive. On the other hand, we have the problem on the islands. In two days, we had 1,500 refugees arriving from the islands, and most of them escorted by Turkish boats. They escort them. And we cannot hold that. We cannot control the situation on the islands. And that's that becomes very dangerous. So, But nothing is being done to Turkey. Turkey is being lightly condemned. But we need practical measures to be taken against Turkey. And the only practical measures that I can see is to, um, is to freeze the, uh, the agreement that exists, the customs union, that exists between Turkey and the EU. That's the only language that they will understand. Um, human, uh, the Human Rights Commissioner of the Council of Europe has um, uh, called the situation at the border uh, um, um, I think humanitarian crisis um, because um, that refugees are now between the Greek and uh, the Turkish border. And uh, it seems that they cannot go to either direction. Uh, I'm asked myself, has um, the Human Rights Commissioner been there? Um, Have the eyewitness um, reports from there? Um, Also, uh, human rights organizations in favor of um, refugees uh, want that refugees um, uh, are helped or possibly taken taking into Europe. And I ask myself, is there maybe a mix real refugees and um, provokers? Sorry, one moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, it is it is a very difficult situation. And uh, as I said before, uh, yeah, the Council of Europe might say this. The, the High Commissioner of Refugees says that we don't have the right not to accept asylum applications. Yes, but the basic right is for, for Greece to, to survive this crisis. And if Greece wants to survive, we're going to do whatever is necessary for us to, to survive. That's all. And even if it has, even if, if if we have to break international law, I mean, what international law? I mean, there's nothing left of international law anymore. I mean, when countries are being invaded like that, and uh... I think if that was just a situation that they just can normally go to the border and apply for asylum, and then one will see if they are entitled. But uh, the the violence by this uh, people. Um, attacking the Greek um, border authorities um, inhibits uh, uh, finding a solution. 
for those who are really, really refugees there. Yeah, the situation, uh, I mean, okay, we have the situation on on the island. The situation on the islands is very desperate. About five days ago, they sent uh, police to uh, establish, to help establish a special camps for these people, for the refugees. The Greek population reacted to that. They refused. They refused. There was big fights with the Greek police, and at the end, the the Greek police had to uh, withdraw. Okay, but what the Turks want to do? The Turks want to have clashes between the Greek population mm-hmm. and the refugees, and that would justify them to invade the island in order to save the refugees, most of them that are Muslims. And once they do that, they won't leave. This is what I think that their plan is. Using using um, provokers and well, not refugees at all, and also real refugees as um, abusing them uh, against Greece um, to have a, yes. a yes. pretext for for an invasion. Yes, and I'm not sure that they are refugees also. I mean, some of them are refugees, but the majority of them, I look at them, I hear them on the videos, they're speaking Turkish, perfect Turkish. And uh, so I believe that there are many Turks among these people who are telling them what to do and how to attack and how to go in into the borders and all that. So for us, it's an invasion. It's an invasion. It's not an an influx of, of refugees. It's an invasion of foreign people coming from a country that wants to undermine the security of Greece. That's it. It's very simple. It's it's not a question of refugees. I mean, we've had we had the resu- uh, we had the refugees in 2015. We took them. We took them. I mean, uh, and uh, now this is on purpose. It's it's one of it's a policy of Erdogan to d- destabilize Greece so that Erdogan can do what it wants with it, either invade an island or create a war, etc. But he has opened too many fronts, and the opposition is growing in Turkey against him. For the first time, there were it was a small demonstration two days ago in Istanbul, about 500 people protesting the war that we can't stand it. Tonight there is a secret meeting, a closed meeting of the Turkish parliament to discuss the situation in Idlib. So uh, there is a growing opposition inside Turkey against what Erdogan is doing. So uh, I think that at the end uh, he might lose control and he might be he might be forced either by by the army or by other people to uh, to leave power. And that would that is the best solution that I think. I mean have Erdogan leave, because we cannot continue like that. And and Turkey must, some measures must be taken against Turkey. I mean, you can't have a country uh, killing off the Kurds, killing off uh, the Syrians, working with terrorists, destabilizing, uh, de- de- destabilizing Libya also, sending troops there, violating the United Nations sanctions on on Libya. And nobody's doing anything to it. I mean, and he thinks that he can get away with everything because of, of the strategic importance that, um, that Turkey has. So he will have a meeting uh, on Thursday with Putin in uh, Moscow, Erdogan. We'll see what comes out of that. Most likely they will reach some kind of an agreement for a ceasefire. But after that, uh, the fighting will will continue. I, th- I think uh, refugee uh, camps in Turkey uh, do not seem a, uh, to be a very safe place. I have read on Fast News that um, Al Qaeda terrorists, uh, even in refugee uh, camps, uh, find victims for uh, organ trafficking, and uh, that um, earlier. Uh, when before ISIS has been created, um, jihadists from uh, Libya have been transported uh, to Turkey 
and they have been trained uh, close to refugee camps. And so it's yeah. I can question if Turkey really uh, is treating as a refugees on its soil um, as it is obliged to. Yeah, but. We must take into consideration that those uh, those refugees, those so-called refugees that are on the Greek border, they were transported by the Turkish authorities in buses to the Greek border. These people lived in Istanbul. They did not leave, live in refugee camps. They were hosted in apartments, in comfortable apartments, etc. Now, these people they can return back to Istanbul, I mean, uh, and stay in the apartments that they were staying. Why should they risk their lives be just because Erdogan wants to use them as uh, a sort of human shields, you know, to, to do his, uh, to do the dirty work for him. But most of the people that I heard on the videos, they were speaking Turkish among themselves. They were not speaking Arabic among themselves or, 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 uh, or Pashtun, which is the, language, one of the languages of, of, of Afghanistan. They were speaking Turkish among themselves. Um, so I think that, that the solution, uh, that one solution for this is for measures to be taken against Turkey. And the only measure that the EU can take that would be effective would be the uh, freezing of the customs union agreement. For me, that's the only result. Uh, that's the only thing that can have results. I think it's um, particularly uh, dangerous uh, regarding situation in Turkey is that um, the Turkish uh, media are um, more under control and than un, uh, informers. Yes, yes. And that the Turkish nationalists, the MHP and the Grey Wolves, are now allied with the uh, AKP. And, in four, and uh, decades ago, uh, they were against them. They were secularly uh, oriented. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, as as far as uh, Germany is concerned, uh, Germany came out today. Merkel made uh, some remarks. Uh, criticizing Erdogan for using the refugees for his policy. Uh, so, did the, so did the foreign minister, Haas. He, made, he also made such, such, such statements criticizing, and both of them expressed their solidarity for Greece. Okay, that's good. I'm not saying it's not good, but something, some kind of measures must be taken against Turkey. That's the only language that they understand. They don't care, the Turks, Erdogan doesn't care if they give us their solidarity. He wants to do his work, and as long as nothing practical is taken against uh, against Turkey, he will continue doing uh, what he wants, unless he's overthrown. Um, President uh, Erdogan is, um, has been um, has presented the kind of greeting of the Muslim uh, Brotherhood, the uh, Rabia sign, and. He has uh, been uh, um, with uh, Mili Gurus, which is an um, organization um, which includes both Turkish nationalism and uh, Islamism. And um, so I, I asked myself, is, does he rather make a Turkish um, a policy or rather a Muslim Brotherhood a policy? He wants Turkish. He wants Turkish policy. Uh, and he's using the Brotherhood as he's using the refugees. He's using the Brotherhood, presenting that he wants a, a Muslim uh, thing, but in reality, he wants the re-establishment of the Turkish, of the Ottoman Empire. That had Egypt before, that had Libya before. I mean, mm -hmm. they had Libya until 1906. Um, the Muslim uh, Brotherhood, they want... Uh, since um, 1928, a global caliphate. And I think they have been used, all the jihadist groups like Idlib, uh, sorry, like um, ISIS and like uh, Al Qaeda and many uh, other smaller groups with their ideology have been used by many countries. And so this would uh, be a sign of that it's rather Turkish uh, policy because so many countries have um, uh, used them to have um, cheap uh, mercenaries.
Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, but again, I mean, it's what, what I said before, that they want to use, uh, they're taking mm. advantage of the Muslim thing in order to, to promote uh, Turkish policy in reality by using re religion. And uh, that's his aim. That's his, uh, that's his um, ambition. And that's why he supported the, uh, the Brotherhood in, in Egypt. Mm. Before uh, before uh, the Brotherhood was overthrown by by the army and the Sisi, and now he's in very bad relations with uh, the present regime, with the present government of Egypt because of what they did to the Brotherhood. So, uh, so on the other hand, in uh, Turkey, his closest associates, the former president Abdullah Gül. He has come openly against Erdogan. So is uh, Ali Babajan, also who was his minister of finance and minister of foreign affairs. Uh, he has come out uh, against Erdogan, and Babajan is creating a, a, a political party that will be against Erdogan. And Abdullah Gül is, uh, who is also a devout Muslim, but he is a civilized man. I mean. He totally, he cannot accept what is happening now in Turkey and how Turkey is going, killing, I mean, invading countries like that. I mean, and don't they understand, I mean, I'm asking the Europeans and the NATO countries, I mean, if, if you don't say anything about what they're doing in Syria, he can think that he would get away by doing something with Greece or with other countries. And it's not, uh, it's, and if he does try something, to Greece, it's going to be very difficult for him because we have uh, our we have been weakened by the by the economic measures imposed upon Greece by the EU. But uh, our armed forces remain very good. Our air force is one of the best in NATO, much better than the Turkish, because uh, Turkey uh, fired uh, and arrested most of its uh, pilots after the 2000. Uh, 16 coup attempt, if it was a coup attempt and not uh, a cu and not something that Erdogan himself had organized, I don't know. So that's uh, how the situation is in the general terms. And uh, I, I, I underline again, and I'm sorry to be insisted, something must be done against Turkey. Measures must be taken against Turkey. And only the EU can do that. NATO cannot do that because NATO cannot take measures against one of its member states. Um, I think the UN General Assembly could uh, send observers, but only until the Security Council uh, picks up the issue. Yes, but the United Nations, the United Nations would send people from the High Commission of Refugees and the High Commission of Refugees we look at it from their from their point of view, which is the treatment of refugees. I mean, they will condemn Greece because they don't allow the refugees in. They will condemn Turkey for using the refugees as, as a pawn, and nothing will happen. They keep the balance that way. I mean, the United Nations is useless in this solution. Only the European Union has the power, if it wants to, to, uh, to take... Uh, to, to take measures against Turkey. Um, this instrumentalization, the creation of a humanitarian crisis and uh, the use of it for, um, for, one can say, military means for creating a pretext for escalation reminds me of a, a concept of um, a humanitarian um, a moment, a humanitarian invasion, uh, which has been created in 1992 by a U.S. think tank in order to circumvene um, the veto right of the Russians and in order to circumvene the uh, prohibition of aggressive war, the humanitarian yeah. intervention, I mean. And um, the, the, the very study by um, the a think tank, Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in 1992, uh, um, has made uh, a given examples um, 
how uh, to support um, opposition in other countries to create a crisis and then how to intervene with a military intervention as a um, um, highest uh, means uh, of the strongest means uh, to, to yeah. intervene. And it reminds me of this deliberately creating a crisis and then uh, to intervene on, on which side and whenever wants. Yes, this is exactly, and I think also that the United States, who has made uh, statements of support, the United States is supposed to be the the biggest ally of Greece with the basis that it has in Crete, the basis that it's making in uh, Alexandropolis. Uh, but uh, in reality, I th the, the United States might think that it's to their interest to have a war between Greece and Turkey because in this way they will be better able to control the area where all the, where all the gas is and with all, where all the energy products are. So if there is a war between Greece and Turkey and both countries destroy themselves, then it's easy for them to take over the area and control the area and have... Uh, direct access to the to the gas and oil deposits that are off that are in, around Cyprus and in the Aegean and in the, in the in the eastern Mediterranean in general and of course Russia doesn't want the US to do that so it's it's all about energy also at the same time if you take if you take away Erdogan if you take away the Greeks and look at the, at what the the big powers want they want access to the energy resources that are in that area. Um, the biggest uh, opposition party, the CHP, the Social uh, Democrats, the party um, of uh, Kemal Ataturk, yes. um, they have uh, protested and said that uh, this uh, intervention um, has outflanked the parliamentary rights of the Turkish parliament. Yes, and uh, perhaps this is one of the issues that are going to be discussed tonight in this close session of Turkish parliament. They have tonight, tonight a, a closed session, it means without media. Without nothing, and, and nothing will come out, because uh, the minutes of the closed sessions of Turkish parliament are 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 frozen for 10 years, nothing can come out. Unless, I mean, I presume members of parliament will give some gossip to the journalist. Mm. Um, how do you see the uh, escalation in Idlib? Well, there's an all-out war happening there. Uh, the Turks are attacking, the Syrians have a strong uh, army, strong air force. And uh, presumably the Russians, Russia in their own way, uh, will help Syria against Turkey. And there's also a possibility that, that at the end, uh, that will depend on how the meeting goes on Thursday between Erdogan and uh, Putin. At the end, you might have the Turks fighting the Russians in Syria. You cannot exclude that. Yes. And that, that might happen by accident. It doesn't have to happen on purpose, the way that it's going, there, how the situation is going there. And if they start bombing Damascus, that's another issue. And of course, Israel is very happy with the situation because Israel would, is very happy to get rid of uh, of Assad and the Syrians and the, and the Iranians who are supporting uh, Hezbollah there in Syria and all that. So Israel is very happy with the situation. Um, I think on the on the ground, uh, Syrian troops and uh, Shia militias supported by Iran and Palestinians, and um, only in secured areas there's Russian military police, and on the other side there are jihadists, uh, many different groups, including Al Qaeda and all with the ideology of the Muslim Brotherhood, and Turkish soldiers directly at the front line, um, only um, I think as commanders, but not so many of them. And uh, yeah. I think Turkey is rather intervening in defense with artillery and um, with uh, with drones. Yeah, and it's not now. 
The other idea that uh, Greece could do, theoretically, is to take from the islands all the Syrian refugees. I mean, uh, the refugees that come from Syria. Put them on five or six cruise boats, right? And with the escort of the Greek Navy, start landing them at the ports of, of those countries that participated in the war in Syria. For example, you go to uh, France. France is participating in the war in Syria. You tell the French, look, we, we give you so many refugees. Then you go to the UK, you go to the other countries, to Germany also. And they would say, no, we can't, refuse, we can't accept them and all that. And then you, ha you, ha you create a crisis, you have a meeting of the European Council, and they will start accepting these people slowly, slowly, because you can't have them on ships for two or three months. Right. Because Greece has, Greece has not participated in the war in Syria. So why should we get the refugees from Syria the moment that we're not participating in the wars and the other countries of the European Union who participated in the war refuse to accept them. Um, I think we should not forget Saudi Arabia and Qatar and Israel. And yeah. I think certainly Germany, at least at a propaganda level and a diplomatical level, has supported this war. I just want to remind of the so-called Friends of Syria political ad hoc alliance with, has uh, made deliberations what to do economically with Syria after the fall of uh, the Syrian government. And this has uh, looked away from this, uh, that the, the main, most of the opposition fighters are jihadists with Muslim Brotherhood ideology, just looked at the economic uh, possibilities. And I think Germany has not sent troops there. Uh, uh, and in, to directly um, fight the regime officially, but um, well, and from Germany, they have many people have Muslim people from Germany have joined the jihadists, and yeah. one can ask, we can ask ourselves, how could this happen? Uh, but it's not. I think it's not as big as France, USA. Um, UK, Turkey, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and Israel have uh, intervened. Yeah. I mean, for example, the United, yeah, uh, the United States has received 40,000 refugees from Syria. And the best qualified, uh, you know, university, 40 only. Mm. Um, so... Germany has uh, received a much larger number. And so, uh, yes. in my opinion, Germany has done so, more to try to um, help the Syrians than it has uh, done uh, in terms of destruction before. A strong opposition uh, against the German military um, contribution to the Syria crisis within the so called um, international alliance and the fight against. ISIS because it's against our basic law, our constitutional order and against the UN Charter. Uh, but I only want to bring the point that those seven countries at least have done more bad damage, much more damage than Germany. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how the situation is. It's not good. Uh, and, uh, I, and I expect that it will uh, worsen as the days pass by, unless something is done against Turkey. So, there's nothing more I can say about it. And there have been warnings from the Iranians um, that uh, the Turkish shall not attack uh, Shia militias with uh, Turkish Air Force. And um, no, no, the Iranians said that they should not attack uh, the Iranians that are in Syria. Ah, That's okay. what told the Turks. Mm. I mean, you can, you can, they could do what they want in Syria, but don't touch the Iranians that are there. They must not be bombed. Okay. So that's uh, that's how it is. We shall see what will happen now in, in the next few days. 
And there's a meeting also on Thursday in Croatia of the Council of Ministers of Foreign Affairs upon the request of Greece. And hopefully there they might decide to take measures against Turkey instead of issuing, instead of issuing statements. Because statements, the Turks don't care about the statements. I mean, they say we don't recognize. For example, when they took the measure, uh, the sanctions against those two Turks of the Turkish Petroleum uh, Drilling Company, they said we do not recognize these measures. They're illegal. That was the reaction of the Turkish Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But if they if they freeze the uh, the customs union agreement, that would be that would hurt them. I think maybe. Um, a- huge um, um, can I say um, an increase of transparency could also set a, a stop sign um, it, uh, particularly regarding where these um, all these um, jihadists come from and how it is organized there are so many uh, pieces of the puzzle I think we the West should start to become honest who has done what. Um, this could be... Uh... Yeah, but among politicians, there's never transparency. <laughs> and I think it has never been clarified. We know the ideology of these people who um, fight merely for discount prices because uh, they have this uh, world caliphate ideology of the muscle blows of fatherhood. Um, but who has been controlling them, who has been directing them, and this has never been yeah. made uh, to the world public, never been made tra- transparent. And it seems that at the moment, Turkey is much of the control. A, a German uh, saying is uh, that um, uh, who pays determines what mu- music is being played. Um, so uh, who is yeah. who's paying for that? Who, who's giving the military commands for them? Yeah, uh, and also as far as Germany is concerned, we must not forget all the, all the weapons and armaments that Germany is selling to Turkey. Mm-hmm. And uh, nobody has ever thought of putting an arms embargo on Turkey. Um, (laughs) Meanwhile, even some public media are criticizing the weapon shipments to Turkey and to Saudi Arabia. Um, But I've uh, read uh, the book by Thierry Messon by uh, Voltaire, who is a Frenchman, uh, a French journalist living in Syria. Uh, The book Before Our Very Eyes. And there he says that um, the weapon shipments to the jihadists have come. Um, one uh, central figure has been, uh, central person has been uh, David Petrius when he has been CIA chief. And even after that, uh, in a, for a private uh, firm where he's been uh, later, he has. Um, coordinated uh, weapon ship shipments, not uh, from a state uh, position uh, anymore. And um, that's uh, this um, operation to send these huge weapon shipments has been called a timber sycamore. And uh, over 16 uh, countries have at least uh, not taken the opportunity to stop this. And uh, he names also Germany, but he does not bring complete proofs, but uh, except for um, quotations from the Bulgarian press. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, speaking about Bulgaria, isn't it strange that there are no refugees going towards the Bulgarian border? It has been announced by President um, But very few, very few, very few, uh, very few have gone to the Bulgarian border because the Bulgarian said that we will shoot them. 
<laughs> Very simply. Really? Yeah, yeah. If they come, we shoot. I mean, we're defending our country. They're not joking. So they all come to us. Anyhow, we shall see. We shall see how developments take place in the next few days after the European Council, after the Council of Ministers Foreign Affairs on Thursday that will take place in Croatia, because Croatia has the presidency. I guess I forgot to tell you that the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Croatia was also present today at uh, at the visit of the U European Union institutions on the Greek-Turkish borders. He was also present there. Um. I um, want to uh, add something hopeful, which I have read on RT, that, that NATO says that they won't help Turkey militarily unless uh, Turkish assault is, uh, is attacked um, by, by Syria. If Syria does not attack uh, Turkish assault, just does uh, defend itself. Uh, NATO will only make um, political support and uh, propaganda. And, um, uh, President uh, Trump has said that uh, the USA won't give air support for Turkey uh, in Idlib. They only send uh, ammunition. Yeah, well, first of all, Trump has two big skyscrapers in Istanbul, the Trump Towers in Istanbul. And uh, Erdogan is using that as a threat that we will take over. And uh, since uh, Trump is is a businessman, he takes good care of his own uh, of his own business there. Okay, that's one thing. Um, as I said before, the Americans, the United States, might want to have a war between Greece and Turkey so that both countries can be destroyed and they can they can control the gas and oil resources in the uh, in the east mediterranean that's that's one thing and uh, because they're not condemning turkey as far as nato i mean as i said at the outset i mean they are accusing syria of using violence against turkey that is invading their country that's ridiculous i mean it doesn't make any sense if I look at Syria, Syria. Yeah, Turkey has invaded Syria. Syria is defending itself. NATO accuses Syria of using force to defend itself. And, and without condemning Turkey, without mentioning anything about Turkey. That's the, that's the sad state of affairs of the international community. Um, Inter international, international law doesn't exist anymore for anybody. All countries do what they want. And uh, it's a sad case for humanity, this, this whole story. We must insist on international law. What international law? <laughs> yeah, of course it exists, but nobody's using, nobody's implementing it. I think if, if, we, if we keep silent, then um, one that will say um, later on that a new um, that new international law um, has been has developed just because of remaining silent uh, against uh, such infringement. Yeah, yeah. So I think that uh, we covered made basically most of the issues uh, on the Idlib case. Now we just have to wait and see what the outcome of. Uh, of Thursday's meeting between Erdogan and Putin would be, and what the Council of, of, of Ministers of Foreign Affairs would decide at their meeting in uh, Croatia. And of course, what's happening on the ground here between Greece and Turkey. I think, yes, and I think it's important to put uh, cameras on it, what, so that the world uh, public sees um, that everyone sees also the human rights organizations, how many provokers are there and how many refugees that uh, everyone has a, has a clear picture worldwide. I think the yeah, yeah. border guards should be uh, supported with a uh, camera to uh, show a life of what is happening there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, I saw a video from the Turkish side where they take children and put them over a fire that smoke so that they can have they can start crying and tearing 
And then they put them on the camera and they're saying, look what's happening to little children here. <laughs> so. Okay. Okay. Many, many thanks for your time and for giving your assessment on the situation. I, I also thank you and whenever you need me, I'm at your disposal. Many thanks. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye.